questions, let's bring up something that also featured uh, in the last week, uh, which some of the dailies already reported it. Former Emir was in your state. It was said to have been is it banished because relocated. Or relocated. Different. They use different words to qualify what happened, how he ended up in Nasara Wasi. But I was going to ask initially, were you consulted before he was brought, even though there's a perspective on the dailies? Were you reached before eventually was sent to your state? You know, if not for this fire, I was thinking that was going to take more time. <laughs> and, uh, and I knew that it was going to be a hot issue. The reason is because the Emir is actually somebody that is well-loved. He's a global citizen. He's somebody that is well-respected, especially, especially, you know, in some parts of the country. He's highly respected. So I knew definitely we were going to be. And that was one of the reasons why we agreed. Now, to answer your question, Yes, we were consulted after he was removed as Emir. So when they made the decision to remove him, the governor directly called, called me and said that we had just removed the Emir. I was actually in a meeting, so my aide called me and gave me the telephone and said it was governor of Kano on the line. So I said, okay, because he's one of the, you know, we are the JJC governors, we are the new governors, so we respect the second term governors a lot. Therefore, uh, he was on the line, they had to bring the telephone to me, so I said, yes, sir. He said, yes, the Emir has been removed, you know, so, and since he has been removed, you know, um, uh, we, are, we have to take him somewhere. So we have decided that we will relocate him to Nasarawa. Will you accept him? Who am I not to accept somebody like, uh, like uh, uh, the former Emir of Kano? You know, one, I was the MD of uh, AP, really, you know, when he was with, uh, with uh, First Bank. Then I was a group MD of Dongote, okay, when he was also uh, the group MD of uh, First Bank, and we had excellent relationship, you know, uh, at the corporate level. Then going back to the CBN uh, governor, he was also a CBN governor, and Dongote being who we are, as large as we are, we have to have a relationship both with First Bank and, and the CBN. Then, of course, he became the Emir of uh, uh, Kano, and after Lagos, my biggest market is Kano. So again, so if you look at it from all directions, uh, I'm there with him. So I said, it will be an honor for me to, to receive him. And I said, I will be more than happy to receive him. The only thing that I will plead is, allow me to select where he will go. You know, because I knew where he will go <laughs> is going to be a factor. Uh, if people don't even understand what is, uh, where he is, because people might think that he was being uh, disturbed. And his, and his safety was of utmost uh, importance to but me. But was he initially scheduled to be in Awe? No. He was initially scheduled to be in local, and I have seen all kinds of grammar about people who have absolutely no knowledge of what local is. You know, they came out of social media, oh, local is the most backward place, oh, local is that, oh, local is, you know, you know so, because people don't know what local is. When there was no major transportation, except through the waters, you know, local was the base where the Lord Lugards of the world and all the other colonial masters from Lagos will come to Loko. And all the northern traditional rulers will go to Loko. That's where the meetings were held. And that is the reason why they nicknamed it Loko London. Because for most of our people who couldn't go to London for meetings with the, colo with the colonial masters, they made them in Loko. That is one. Two, today, the 2.2 kilometer road, so uh, they, they call it Oweto Bridge, that connects the Western part, the Minister of uh, Works and Housing, Fashola, just went there two days ago. You know, the main bridge, which is 2.2 kilometers, perhaps the biggest bridge that you are going to have, you know, in northern Nigeria, is right there in Loko. Three, we have a first-class traditional ruler who is of the same kinds of traditions as a Hausa man, just like the Emir, also in Loko. The, our SSG, our secretary to the state government today, who had been commissioner over and over is from Loko. And let me tell you, it is his house. He that left the house be... that the Emir was sent to, to go and stay in Why that did house. it then change? Huh? What changed? Okay. One of the reasons that we changed him was because Loko is too far from Lafia. Being in Loko and also the road to Loko, today most of the people from the east, we have over 300 trucks that now, or 200 vehicles that now come across from the east going to Abuja, they go through local. So the road is still under construction in some locations. It's not finished. 
I knew it will be difficult for me for a life year going all the way around. It will be taking me not less than six hours to go to Loco. So any day I wanted to see the EMEA, it will be a whole day's event. So, and I knew I, I, I needed to be going to see him from time to time. If I knew that we are going to be lucky for him to stay only a week or less, I would have allowed him to stay in the local because a local welcome him. They arrived there around 3 o'clock in the morning. People were away waiting to receive the Emir when they were told. And he himself came to thank me about going to local. He said he was received in, in a way. Some people even say there is no GSM supply in local. This and all kinds of, uh, uh, I, I don't even want to call it the right but, word, you know, so that's but Speaking about confusion, we were initially confused about the, how to pronounce the word uh, away. Yes. So, some of my colleagues confused me more. They, oh, they, they called it um, away. I said, no, this is not your about word. So it couldn't have been away. No, but in Yoruba, you call it away, isn't it? Yeah, but... Uh, because the, in Yoruba, the... it's, a, it's a name. I remember one of my major customers in Nestle. His name is uh, Mr. Away. You know, he's a Yoruba guy. But, you know, away also comes in one because from life here to away, it's an excellent road. It's like traveling on... Uh, on uh, uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway is an excellent road from life here. Secondly, it's not express road, it's just one lane, but it's actually a, a, a well tad road. But wh why did you meet with the president before Thursday? Because we understand you had a meeting with the president and his residence. It was related to this matter, wasn't it? Not at all. I went to see Mr. President on about four different items, and the Emir was none of them. At the time, the Emir was already with me when I went to see the, the mm -hmm. president. I didn't go to see the president after that. In fact, I had scheduled to see the president on the day of uh, NEC, you know, which was Wednesday yeah. or so on Wednesday. Already the Emir was with me, you know, so I had nothing to do with the, with the Emir. I went to see the president on about four different um, uh, uh, items. As you know, there is an oil and gas exploration activity going on in Nasarawa State, you know, very close to our way for that matter. The Dangote farm, which perhaps will be the biggest sugar plantation in Africa, is in that same way that we are talking about. You know, so, so I went to see the, the, him on that one first. The second one is concerning the rail line that we had, you know, going on from uh, Abuja that we are talking with the FCT. The third one is concerning our airport. We are almost completing our airport. So I was, the president also wanted to know. So, and finally, I went to discuss the economy. You know, we are concerned about the way the oil and gas sector, you know, is going on, the prices is going on, how our budget are looking. And from time to time, some of us who have a little knowledge of the economy, we discussed that with the president. Now, one will wonder how you uh, avoided the politics around it, the, the controversy around is it the relocation, the banishment, the dethronement of the former emir. So on one hand, you have a relationship with the former emir, and then you have a relationship with the governor of Kano State. So how did you walk around that, such that, I mean, you didn't harm one relationship in place of another? It will, that, that's, I think, probably the, you know, I have attended interview here as MD of AP and MD of Dongote a couple of times. I think the experience I got from you guys here helped me, you know, to do that. You see, part of it is that, I think that's, that's what you have to do as a manager. I, I had no, I didn't ask any of them, why did you remove him? I didn't ask the Emir, why did they remove you? I don't think it's my, my business. But I will not be a hypocrite. I know that in our northern culture, once Emirs are removed, they are sent somewhere. They are banished somewhere. His own grandfather, Sanusi I, was removed. When he was removed in 1963, one, one, the same thing similar to ours, mm. You know, the Emir of Azare agreed to receive him. He said, I will receive you. He said, the only thing in Azare is that this is what San Uzi told me himself. This is the story he told me himself. You know, and he said, only that in Azare, we don't have water, no light. Of course, at that period, no telephone. We don't have good road. And the man, uh, San Uzi once said, do you have love for me? He said, we love you. He said, if you love me, I will receive and I think it's similar to what the Emir actually received in Nasarawa State. From Loko to Awe, he performed the Kuduba. He led the prayer in Awe. When he well, was leaving, the people were crying. We say, well, the man is going because he's free. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come back and discuss several other matters with you. But we do have the deputy governor of Lagos State at the scene of the unfortunate incident, the pipeline explosion. But we'll be coming to all of that when we return in a moment. Don't go away.